Hello, uh, good morning. So yeah, as you can see, I'll be talking about pattern matching. Um, but before I get into it, um, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is quite long, uh, but I usually go by just Tay. Um, currently, uh, I'm from here, from Bangkok, and I'm currently living in Tokyo. Um, I use Ruby on Rails and Vue.js on a daily basis. And around two years ago, um, I found out about this functional language called Elixir. Um, yeah, it's, I think it was really like, hyped up in the Ruby community, so I checked it out and I found out about this feature called pattern matching. Uh, and yeah, uh, I, I felt it was really neat in Elixir and you know, I, I really liked it. And yeah, basically, you know, what pattern matching is, um, is that it deconstructs complex data structure, it binds uh, you know, values from those complex data structure to variables, um, it allows Elixir, which is a dynamically typed language, to have method overloading. Uh, sometimes when you look at Java, you, you, you say you know, um, it's a typed language, so you can differentiate between each method through you know, the argument types, but you can't do that with Ruby because Ruby is not typed. Um, but with Elixir, they, they did it with pattern matching. So yeah, I think that's really cool. And you know, to, to show you some example, I'll show you um, pattern matching in Elixir first. Um, this is um, pattern matching in Elixir. It's exactly like multiple assignment in um, Ruby. Um, yeah, so A is binded to hello, B is binded to world, and C is binded to 42. And it can also you know, deconstruct an array into head and tail, where head is the first element and tail is the rest of the array. Yeah, um, but it does way more than that. Um, it also checks for values. So for an example here, um, it's pretty much the same, but the last, um, instead of a variable, we have 42. And um, what this does is it checks, uh, it binds A to hello, B to world, and then it checks that the last element, 42, are the same. So if you look at the example here, um, 88, um, that's not 42. So you know the last ver value is not the same. It raises an error instead of binding the variables. Uh, it also check for types and stuff like that. Um, it also, you know, you can also do match, pattern matching with maps. This is kind of like hash in Ruby. So we have animal uh, as the key and then the value variable animal. And then on the right hand side, we have dog as the value. So, you know, wait, sorry, that should be animal instead of BTC and that'll print out dog. Sorry, I last minute changed that slide. <laughs> um, uh, over here, and then with this, we can do um, we can define multiple uh, definition for process, and then we take in different maps at, with different keys, and depending on the keys, um, different process method gets called. Uh, I think there's a really clean way to you know differentiate between um, logic between each data structure. So yeah, um, and basically what pattern matching is it is that it explicitly tells you what data is to expect. Um, it assigns value to a variable uh, in those complex data structure. Um, it also allows Elixir to have method overloading. Um, basically, think of um, pattern matching as something like if-else statement with you know, powerful variable assignment. Um, and yeah, uh, you might be wondering why I'm talking about this, because it's a functional programming thing, well, in, in Ruby 2.7, they're uh, implementing pattern matching. Uh, yeah, and you know, it's still experimental. Uh, if you download the um, newest version of Ruby development, uh, the trunk, um, you can try this out. Every time you run uh, the pattern matching code, it says, don't run this in production. It's still experimental. Um, yeah, and you know, I tried it out, and I'll tell you guys you know, more about it. So first, I guess let's talk about the um, syntax. Um, uh, in Ruby, you use case statement to, to do pattern matching. So you have a case statement and you provide it with an expression or a variable. And then instead of the usual when, you use in. And then you provide um, a pattern in, this, in these clauses. It also supports um, if and unless um, clauses. And then if nothing else matched, you can do else as a default um, block. 
So that's you know very similar to a case statement. So I'll show you an example. But first, um, let's look at this um, problem. Um, let's say we have an array of translation where you know the there's a original language, original text, translated language, and translate translated text as the, as the value in the um, array. And you know we want to check that the original language is Thai and the translated language is English, and then we print out the translations. What I would do um, with normal Ruby is I would multiple assign um, the, ver uh, the array into all these variables, check that the um, original language and the translated language is correct, and then I'll print out the um, translation. But with pattern matching, um, you could do it with this code here. So instead of having to multiple assign and check you know, that the values are correct, you can just tell the program that you, know, you want the first array to be th, you want the third array to be en. It's you know, a lot more expressive, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, you can bind um, the original text and translated text to the um, second and the fourth variables in the, uh, in the array. So what it does is it checks that the um, length of the arrays are the same. And then it checks that the value for each index are the same. And then if it's a variable, it binds the variable. Yep. Uh, yeah, and this is a comparison between, you know, with pattern matching and without pattern matching. Uh, yeah, instead of having to go into the data structure and check each value, you can just, you know, explicitly tell it that this is the kind of array you want and which variable you want to bind. Um, so that was pattern matching with array. Um, this is also exactly the same problem, but instead of array, we have hash. Um, yeah, original language, translated language, original text, translated text, exactly the same. And what I would do is I would check this with you know no more Ruby code at the moment. Um, I would check that you know each value in the in the hash has the value I wanna I wanna you know check and. I would check that you know the key in the hash also exists, and then I would print out the um, translations. So you know that's Ruby. You know, you, uh, nothing new. Um, but with pattern matching, I I can write it as such. So the translation variable is you know the same as before. But instead of going into the um, data structure and check all these values, you can tell the program exactly how you want how you want your hash to look like. And then which you know value to bind, and then which value to use. Um, basically, what it does is it checks that the key in the pattern exists in the expression. Um, it checks that the value for each key matches, and then it binds um, the variable to you know the value. Um, it you can also rewrite. You know you see this original text to original text, translated text to translated text. Uh, there's a syntactic sugar where you can just do that, you know, have a value and then colon instead of rewriting it twice. So this is the comparison with pattern matching and without pattern matching. Uh, yeah, so very similar to the array example, I think. Um, instead of having to go into the data structure, checking all the values, you can, you know, write out the hash you want and it tells you exactly, you know, what to expect. Yeah, so that's um, pattern matching with hash and array. Um, there are also other tools like the pin operator. Um, this is exactly the same as the one in Elixir. Um, uh, it evaluates um, variables instead of binding the variables. Um, yeah, uh, well, in this example here, we have get translations where um, we take an original language, translated language, and translation array, and then we pattern match with pa uh, translation array. And instead of rebinding you know, original language and translated lang, we put a pin operator in front of these variables. And what it does is it um, it'll evaluate these variables instead of binding it. So yeah, the first example, we have th and en. And in the array, we also have th and en. So that will, you know, um, print out the translation. But with the second example, we have JA instead of um, EN, and that will raise um, no pattern match error. Yeah. 
Um, there's also the um, ignore operator where, you know, um, what it does is basically you, you tell the program that you don't care about this value. So over here, you know, both matches, even though the third element are different. And that's because, you know, um, it's an ignore operator. Um, we also have, they also have other operators like um, the assign operator where, you know, it would bind um, values to a variable. Um, so in this example here, um, you have translation hash and then you match translation hash with, you know, original key and translation key. And inside you also check for lang, that it's th and en, and then you uh, assign this to original hash and translation hash. So what we do is we check that the lang is correct, but when we print out these values, the text is also in the variable, and that's because you assign um, the whole object into these variables. Yeah, so th those are you know, some tools. Um, um, Ruby pattern matching in 2.7 has. Um, they also have a new um, special method. Um, so this is something like initialize, where you know, in initialize you, you do dot new and initialize get called. Um, with deconstruct and deconstruct keys, you can define these method in your um, classes, and then when you you know pattern match against these uh, the instance of these objects, uh, deconstruct and deconstruct keys get called. So uh, let me give you an example, just to make it clear. Um, so we have a class called node um, with deconstruct define and deconstruct keys define, and then on the left hand side, on the right hand side, we have you know this initialize. Um, of initialization of values, and then we pass node to a pattern matching clause, and then we match it against an array. Um, yeah, if we match against an, against an array, um, deconstruct methods get called, and then it matches the value, uh, the result of deconstruct against uh, the pattern, and it's the same with deconstruct keys, uh, but just with hash. And uh, with deconstruct method, you have to return an array or it'll give you an error. And with deconstruct keys, you have to return a hash or it'll give you an error. So that's, you know, type matching and uh, type, type checking in Ruby. That's something um, new. <laughs> um, so let's, let's, I want to, uh, so yeah, that's, that's what I found out about pattern matching in Ruby. Um, I want to give you, you know, what I think about this whole thing, and I want to end on a good note. So let's start with the bad stuff first. Um, <laughs> having coming, um, having coming from Elixir, like the first time I used pattern matching was in Elixir. Um, I feel like um, this is not exactly what I expect. Um, you know, having pattern matching in a switch statement, um, the syntax feels a little clunky. Um, to match just one pattern, you need at least three lines of code because um, it's, a, it's a switch statement. And if you want to match multiple patterns, you would have a big, you know, a very big uh, case statement. Um, and I'm so also not too sure about the um, performance. At the moment, um, I did benchmarking and it's around twice um, the speed of, uh, it's, it's twice the time uh, to execute the pattern matching code um, against, you know, just hash lookups, but it's still experimental and I see that, you know, each time you call pattern matching, you know, all the deconstruct and deconstruct keys method get called each time. So, you know, that's something to be improved and I think it'll be better, but I'm still not too sure. Um, with the pros, um, I feel like, you know, it has the potential to make Ruby a little easier to read. Um, yeah. Um, and I like that, you know, there's an effort being made to bring something cool from other languages to Ruby. Like, you know, in Elixir, a lot of people like pattern matching and, you know, that's why uh, they're trying to implement it in Ruby. And yeah, I'm, I'm really keen to see how, how pattern matching will go from here. Yeah. And that's all I have. Thanks. <laughs>